Now, for more details about the developments in the United States, we are being joined live by our correspondent Jagriti Dave from Washington, D.C. Jagriti, thanks for joining us today. Now, give us some details about this recent scuffle between the ex-defense chief James Mattis and Donald Trump. Now, Mattis has made an extraordinary rebuke to the U.S. president about the use of military force in quelling protests. This seems unprecedented, and does it show the growing animosity towards the Trump administration? Uh, General Jim Mattis uh, wrote a statement which was published in The Atlantic, and it was a scathing statement. He uh, criticised the president's handling of the protest. Now, General Jim Mattis um, retired as, resigned as the Pentagon chief in uh, 2018 after a disagreement uh, over uh, the sit president's Syria policy. And since then, he has been silent, very, refused to talk about politics or the president. And he's come under some criticism for that. But today, he broke that silence. And he said, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Uh, he opposed the president's threat to invoke the Insurrection Act, uh, saying we do not need to militarize our response to protests. He also condemned Monday's uh, dispersal of protesters outside the White House that allowed President Trump to walk over to uh, a nearby church and uh, take, have his picture taken with a Bible in hand. He said that that was an abuse of executive power. And he also criticised those who were with the president uh, for, uh, that photo, for that moment, one of those being the current Defence right. Secretary, Mark Esper, though he doesn't name him. Right. Now, you know, just an update on the protest. The other officers who were on site when George Floyd was killed have now been charged with abetting and aiding the crime, while Derek Chauvin, the man who was accused of killing Floyd, has been charged with second-degree murder. So how have the protesters responded? Do they feel that they have received some sense of justice? Protesters were always wanting um, the other officers uh, who were involved in uh, George Floyd's arrest to face uh, charges. That was part of their cause for justice. But these protests have developed into something more, and some, into something more, and something bigger than um, the death of one unarmed man. As tragic and awful as that one death is, there are many deaths of that nature of unarmed black people uh, in police custody, and even broader than the deaths of black people in police custody. It is about racial injustice in America. So these protests have sp uh, have uh, turned into something much wider, much broader about justice um, for African Americans in the United States in that broader sense. Right. Now, how do we see these protests panning out in the coming days now that the police officers have been charged? We know that several small businesses have been destroyed by looting and vandalism activities, and these businesses were already struggling due to the COVID-19 lockdowns. So what lies ahead really for this movement? Well, it's interesting. Um, when um, the mayor of D.C. here, which has seen uh, several businesses uh, in the city uh, have their frontages destroyed um, as, uh, during uh, some of these protests, um, the mayor said that, well, there's a mixed reaction from the community, from the business community. It's empathy to, un uh, to anger to sadness. And, you know, one example is of a local business who um, spoke out and said, before anyone puts anything, any words into my mouth, Black Lives Matter. Um, as she was going to examine what had happened to her store. So there's clearly, despite all of this, there's a lot of empathy. This is something that President Barack Obama said when he spoke for the first time on camera about these protests at a virtual town hall, that despite um, the looting in, uh, that has been taken place, which he said by a minority of people, which has been um, focused, which has got a lot of attention, the majority of people uh, from recent polls uh, are supportive, sympathetic to the protesters and what they are asking for. So there is a real sense that there is general public support and sympathy behind these protests. Now, how long they go on for, how long these curfews go on for, DC's curfew starts at 11 o'clock, which is in around uh, 15 minutes time. Uh, yesterday, they started at 7 p.m. So, you know, it, 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 there is expected to be uh, some sort of engagements and interactions between protesters and the police. But uh, it's unclear as to how long uh, these protests are going to go on for, especially uh, in with the light of the way the president is talking about mobilizing um, the military, he's threatening to do so. What happens next? That is still yet unclear. 
All right, Jagriti, thank you so much for joining us uh, and giving us all the updates. And now let's move on to our next story. Rahul Dubey, an Indian origin resident of Washington, is being hailed as a hero on social media for his acts during the ongoing Black Lives Matter protests. On the night of June 1st, Dubey opened his doors to some unexpected guests, those taking part in the protests. Out after the 7 p.m. curfew and about to be arrested, the protesters were surrounded by police with nowhere to go. And in that moment, Rahul Dubey flung open his doors and allowed a sea of protesters to enter his house and take shelter. Through his act, more than 60 protesters found temporary respite from pepper spray infused rubber bullets from policemen with their guns raised at them. The police officers asked Dubey to open the doors, but he refused point blank. And I flung open the door and the people that were sitting here, I was like, get inside. People were running, they were running up here and I was like, get inside, get inside. And all of a sudden the, the cop, the, the police line was probably two doors down and it just started, more people started coming. And then five people tried to fit in through here at a time. And I was just like, slow down, don't crush anyone, just get inside, get inside. And now the pepper spray is coming and they're coughing and they can't see and they're tripping up on these stairs. And their friends or whoever's around them is helping them, pulling them inside the house. And this went on for 10 minutes. Rahul Dubey has since been hailed as a hero. And the next morning, he was given a round of applause from the protesters and supporters who gathered outside his house to express their gratitude. And as a token of thanks, several people left cookies, chocolates and flowers at the doorstep of Dubey's house. Soon, Dubey's name and his heroic act was trending on Twitter and many of those who took shelter in his house saluted his act of compassion. Some called him the real hero of the day, while others said that he was the only one who kept them safe.